Welcome to the Moms of Tweens and Teens podcast. If some days you doubt yourself and you don't know what you're doing, if you've ugly cried alone in your bedroom because you felt like you're failing, well, I just want you to know you're not alone and you have come to the right place. Raising tweens and teens in today's world is not easy. And I'm on a mission to equip you to love well and to raise emotionally healthy, happy tweens and teens that thrive. I believe that moms are heroes and we have the power to transform our family and to impact future generations. If you are looking for answers, encouragement, and to become more of the mom and the woman that you want to be, welcome. I'm Cheryl Gould, and I am so glad that you're here. Hi, friend. Welcome to the show today, and I am so glad that you're listening in. And we're going to have some fun today. I promise you, you're going to really enjoy this episode. My very special guests are Dawn and Cher Hubsher, who you may recognize as a mother-daughter duo from TLC's hit reality TV show, Smothered. Or maybe you know them from MTV's My Super Sweet 16. Dawn and Cher were so warm and real and funny. I had the privilege to really get to know them because we had about an hour of technical difficulties. <laughs> so it was just so enjoyable being with them through the technical difficulties and getting to really talk to them. And I was like, oh, I would just love to spend the day with them. That's how warm and inviting and fun they were. And Dawn and Cher also wrote the book, A Bond That Lasts Forever, How We Got This Close and You Can Too. And it's all about the mother-daughter relationship, which is what we're going to be talking about today. After the podcast, I was struck by how important it is to focus on the good stuff, which you are really going to hear in this interview. And as a mom who has two daughters, over the years, I I realize that you know, it's it's easy to want to control things. We put we put a lot on our daughters. We we can end up projecting a lot of ourselves onto our daughters. And it's also easy to worry. We don't want them to make some of those mistakes that we made and to go through those things. And it's easy to nag or want to control versus really focusing on the positives and thinking about the ways that we can build that connection and a strong foundation. And this is what we talk about today in the episode. We talk about ways to strengthen the mother-daughter bond, how Cher and Dawn went through a lot when Cher was in high school and what that was like for both of them and how they got through that time. They share tips from their book and what it's like to work together on a hit reality TV show, and so much more. So I know you're going to enjoy this episode, and let's dive in. Well, Dawn and Cher, welcome to the Moms of Tweens and Teens podcast. I'm so grateful that you're here and excited to talk to you. We're going to have so much fun talking about the mother-daughter relationship. And we have such great energy. It's going to be a blast. I can't wait. <laughs> Thank, Thank you so, so much. much. For having us. <laughs> <laughs> We're so excited to be here. I'm excited for you to be here too. And I have been having so much fun preparing for this and watching the two of you on the TLC's uh, reality show smothered and also listening to your podcast and watching you on YouTube and reading your book about the mother-daughter relationship. This is going to be 
such a helpful episode for our moms that are listening, that are dealing with their daughters and how to navigate that relationship. So let's start. Why don't you each introduce yourself? So Cher, you want to tell about sure. yourself? Sure. My name is Cher. I am Dawn's daughter. I'm 32. I have a daughter of my own who's three years old and she is just like the cutest thing ever. Um, I've been married for nine years now. My mom and I wrote a book. It's called A Bond That Lasts Forever. Basically, it's how my mom and I got so close and how others can too. And we have this really close relationship, but it wasn't always this way. So we talk about that in the book and how we became even closer in how we are today. We also have a podcast. It's called Chattermouth Podcast. And we talk about everything and anything and nothing is off limits. We talk about relationships, sex, our day-to-day life, um, and just really having that open communication. We also interview amazing people along the way with such inspiring stories. Uh, so I definitely hope you check that out as well. Um, and my mom and I also have a brand new clothing line coming out. It's called Twinning with Dawn and Share. My mom and I love um, twinning and matching outfits, but we don't always like to do it the exact same. So we wanted a clothing line where it's 100% sustainable, where moms and daughters both can have their own individuality, but then come together and have you know similar outfits with similar styles, but also with their own looks. So we're super excited about that and just so excited to be here and chatting with you now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And- <laughs> Congratulations on that new line. We'll have to hear a little bit more about that as well. (laughs) Thank you. So Dawn, why don't you, uh, we'd love to hear about you and what you're up to and yeah. Yes. Well, I'm a mother of three. I have two boys and Cher. Cher's the youngest. And uh, we're all very, very close. I have a close relationship with all three. Of course, it's easy to talk to my daughter all day. My sons don't like speaking to me all day. I get to speak to them once a day if I'm lucky. (laughs) um, She speaks to me much more or we text or we um, FaceTime with her daughter, Belle, my granddaughter. And we're just excited to be on this podcast to show that it's okay to be close to your mom. It's it's not crazy. It's, It's good you know I mean who knows you better than your mom or your daughter and um, that's why we even wrote a book to say you know other mothers and daughters can have their own great relationship it doesn't have to be like ours but there's nothing like having that special relationship with each other and a mom you know wears a lot of hats so (laughs) um, and we have to navigate it all but it's great having these close relationships and that's what we love about it. And then we also have this podcast, which is wonderful, called Chattermouth Podcast. And the reason we have it's called Chattermouth is because we chatter all day. <laughs> and we have big <laughs> smiles. So that's why we named it Chattermouth. And nothing is off limits with that podcast. We talk about everything and get down to the nitty gritty. And we have a 62-year-old woman, which is my self point of view. And a 32-year-old woman, which is shared point of view, sometimes we agree and sometimes we disagree. We agree to disagree. So it's interesting <laughs> to get different perspectives on it also. Yeah, I love that. Agree to disagree, which isn't always easy. I know for the moms that are listening that have tweens and teenagers and woo, that can be hard when our daughters disagree with us. And what was that like for you when you were a teenager, Cher? Like you said, it has Mm -hmm. not always been easy. Yes. Especially having been close. Did you, what was that like? You went into the teen years and. Yeah. So my mom and I always had a close relationship, but we definitely had our ups and downs as well. I remember specifically when I was a teenager, especially, um, we definitely had a lot of rocky points. My mom always wanted to be very involved in my life. And sometimes I felt like it was too much. Uh, It's one thing to want to be involved. Another thing to always want to give your opinion, give your opinion without fully hearing me. So we had to work a lot on our communication skills to make sure we really hear each other. So when I was a teenager, I remember I used to try to tell my mom what was wrong and she would right away want to jump in and give her opinion and her advice on it. And 
I didn't feel she was truly hearing me. So what I used to do when I was a teenager is I would write my mom letters explaining what was bothering me. And the reason I would write these letters is because I felt that she wouldn't have a chance to come out and tell me what was wrong or tell me what what I was doing was incorrect or give me advice. She has to really just sit there and listen. This was her chance to sit down, listen to what I'm saying because she doesn't have any, any other choice. She has to read every single word. So this actually did really help. I feel get through to my mom because after writing those letters, I noticed our communication really got stronger because my mom was finally learning about me, hearing what I had to say. And it allowed her that next time we have these arguments to step back and say, listen, I don't want to have to have you write me a letter. I'm going to sit back and hear what you're saying. And I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to listen. And that allowed our relationship to get stronger and stronger. And now my mom is my best friend. And I'm very, you know, I'm blessed for the hard times. The hard times are hard, but they get you stronger. They make you into the relationship that you have now. And, um, and I love our bond now. Yes. Yeah. Well, motherhood is a learning experience. We don't learn, we, there's no manual on how to be the perfect mom. You learn as you grow. So I learned that I had to really hear what she had to say and not just ramble on and give my opinion, but hear what she has to say and what's really important to her. And I think that's a really crucial part in getting a close relationship is not just think that you're listening and hearing, but really hear her and listen to her and see her feelings and hear what's bothering her. And and that way your communication gets better. Yeah, that is so true, that listening piece. And it is hard for us as moms to listen, especially when they're teenagers and they say things that we don't want to hear and we are, they're upset and we want to jump in and fix it and help. And yet they don't want that. So they <laughs> it's away. It's, you know, it's, it's hard to navigate, but sounds like Dawn, you were open to hearing Cher's feedback to you that she wanted you to listen. I was, I mean, especially when she started to write me these letters and these notes. And I realized that she's giving her feelings out that way and not expressing them verbally. So I said, you know, I want her to express it verbally. I need to really listen and take a step back. And that's exactly what I did. I mean, we have to accept criticism. To grow, you have to accept criticism, even on yourself. And sometimes it's very hard to accept criticism. But if you do, you will grow from it and be a better person from it. And for myself, it made me a better mother from it. Such important words. I think Mm -hmm. that's one of the hardest things because we hear criticism and we want to be defensive. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and yet, did you find that that was so helpful, Cher, when your mom was willing to listen? Oh, of I'm course. I mean, take in your criticism. Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, like she said, there's no manual to be a mom. And I get that now. I have a daughter and you're always learning. But I think having my mom step back and want to become closer, I could tell my mom wanted to be my best friend. She wanted to be involved in my, in my life and everything she said, all of her opinions that she was throwing me at me, even though I didn't want to hear them, I knew they came from a place of love. So when she took a step back and was really trying to hear what I had to say, I could tell that she was really taking it all in and thinking about what she was going, what advice she was going to give me after that. Um, and I knew that advice came with love and I, I respected that. And I trusted her to respect me to make that my own decision as well. Yeah. Wow. And now you are on a reality TV show. <laughs> yes. Which I, I usually, I mean, to be quite honest, I usually don't watch reality TV. I really like the show. Thank you. <laughs> you know, and I'm like, oh, this is what my, because I have two daughters and one son yeah. and my son's in the middle. So I know I talk to the girls more than I, you know, talk uh-huh. to my son. He's more independent and he's married. Now. <laughs> um, and I, I, they are, they're always, they, my daughters love the reality shows. And I'm like, this is what they're talking about. This is so fun. And I think it is because it's about the mother daughter relationship. Yes. And so what is that like being on that show? Like, how did that happen? 
Yeah. So it was so funny. They were casting for mothers and daughters who were best friends. And I was like, well, my mom is my best friend. We should apply. And we were applied and we got on the show before we ever knew the show was going to be named Smothered. So when we found out it was called Smothered, we're like, oh no, like what did we get ourselves into? Um, But it's been such a fun experience and being able to watch back so many amazing memories that we've had. I mean, The show showed me when I was pregnant and then when I had my daughter, now my daughter's three and we've been on for four seasons and it's really been amazing. But um, I think it is interesting, you know, people see some of the crazy times in our life and sometimes my mom can be, you know, smothering as they say, but she's also, everything comes from love and my mom is my best friend. So I love having a now platform where I can show that even though our relationship might seem over the top or too much for some, we have a strong relationship where we're very happy in our relationship. And if we can inspire just one mom or one daughter to pick up the phone and call their mom or call their daughter to have a closer relationship, then I think, you know, everything we put out into this world um, is worth it. And I always say it's never too late to start a relationship. You know, you can't say, well, I didn't have one, so that's it. You could start it at any age, as long as you put in the effort. Yeah. So, you know, regarding that, what do you think makes your relationship work so well? Because there are moms that are listening and their relationship is really strained Mm -hmm. and, and hurting. And so what do you think has what would in like in your book that you've written, uh, the bond that lasts forever, you give some tips in there. And I like the book too. I just want to say to our listeners, it is a book where you have exercises that you can go through separately as a mom, um, with your daughter. So you both, it's like a, you can use it as a tool to be Mm -hmm. able to communicate, but, um, what do you feel like makes it work? I think that a mom has to wear different hats. Sometimes you have to be a mom and tell her what's right and wrong. Sometimes you should be a friend and, and, and that's good too. I also feel you need to be able to communicate and not be selfish. I think you need to give your all to, to your daughter and not say it's about you. That's what I think. Yeah. Something that I love about, you know, my relationship with my mom is knowing that I could always count on her. I think having someone that I know she's reliable and she always shows up for me. And she's also my biggest fan. Like no matter what I do, she is telling me that I am just, that I'm wonderful and I'm great. And it means so much, you know, hey, no matter if I'm feeling really down this day, I know I can call my mom and she's going to make me feel better. And having that person on your side is, is just such a blessing. Like I know I'll get dressed up one day and I'll look okay. And my mom will say, oh my gosh, Cher, you look just like a model. And I'll say, mom, like I do not look good, but she's my biggest fan. She's my biggest supporter, my rock. And I want that person. You want to be surrounded by people who make you feel good. She makes me feel good, right? So I want to be around her more. And so I think if there's ever a strained relationship showing that you come from a place of love, and sometimes you need to sit down and tell your daughter, hey, listen, I love you. I think you're amazing. I want to support you and I want to be there for you. Even if she wants to push you away at that moment, explaining your feelings and really saying that you, it comes from love. It's going to mean so much to your daughter or to your son, because I know for me firsthand that even when I was a teenager and I was going through hard times, knowing that even when my mom was too much, she was too pushy. She was too in my face, knowing still that it came from a place of love Like she's now my best friend and I wouldn't have wanted it any other way. I always taught my children, speak from your heart. You can't go wrong if you speak from your heart. So I always speak from my heart and I tell her my utmost feelings and she'll understand it. Maybe not agree with it all the time, but she understands it because I'm really speaking from my heart. Yeah. Yeah. Speak from your heart. That's such words of wisdom. And, and I can, I can see between the two of you that you have a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. We do. (laughs) And I think that is something that we forget. Now, maybe you never did Dawn because you're so much fun, but I think sometimes one of the hats that maybe we need to take off is that we get way down and we do take it personally. 
And we do see our kids' choices as a reflection of us, whether we're, we're doing a good job or not a good job. If our kid makes mistakes, our daughters make mistakes, we, see, we tend to take that personally and think we're failing in some way versus, you know, this is their growth process and, and kind of taking that hat off and thinking maybe we need to spend a little bit more time focusing on the positive and having fun together. Because that mm-hmm. seems to be, I, you both radiate positivity and fun. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think that every mother and daughter should find something that they enjoy doing together. And that will even bring you closer. Like we love talking. So we decided to have create a podcast, the Chat em Out podcast together. So that is becomes our special time to just talk, have a cup of coffee and talk about everything on it where nothing is off limits. And it's nice because it's our special thing. So I think if mothers and daughters to find their special thing, it'll even bring them closer. Yes. So I have to comment. That's funny that um, Smothered, you didn't know the name of it before you agreed to be on the show. Yes. <laughs> so some people might say about you, Don. okay, you, you'd you content to get in there. I did watch the one with, J- with Jer- Jared, right? Yes. Bobby and how you were telling him you were going to stay for two weeks and you had to bring the news to him and, you know, that whole thing. And so how do you deal with that? Like if share if Dawn's like, feel like she's smothering you, how do you like have those boundaries? And what does that feel like to you, Dawn? Like speak to the whole boundary smothering because- mm-hmm. Oh, I understand the smothering. It's, you know, the wanting to get in there and yes. control things, right? Right. It's funny. We don't see each other like we're smothering. Other people do. And sometimes I go, oh, maybe I was a little overbearing or something. But we're happy in our relationship. And if they feel I shouldn't come for an extra week, that if she tells me, I will then step back, you know, if that really bothers her. But I make mm-hmm. life fun when we're together. So she kind of enjoys it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Speaking of fun, you know, every time I'm with my mom, I always say I have the most fun. She's my best shopping partner. It just makes it more fun because it's like you have your best friend around. Um, but when it comes to boundaries, you know, it is sometimes hard figuring out your boundaries. Like my mom and I have now have a rule, like we had to set some boundaries because sometimes my mom and I don't always sit down and have a full hour long conversation every day. We'll talk five minutes here, five minutes there, a minute here, a minute there throughout the day. We are very involved in each other's life. I'll call her up, ask her a question, I hang up, it's over. And like throughout the whole day. So we have now a rule where we can't call each other during dinner. And so always before I go to dinner and I'm sitting down with my husband, I'll text my mom, hey, I'm about to have dinner. Or my mom will text me, hey, I'm about to have dinner. Don't call me. And so we don't call each other when we're with having our own family time because we know there had to be a boundary, right? We can't be talking while my husband's eating there. Like I want to be engaged with my husband and she wants to be engaged with, with hers, who's my dad. Um, so we did have to put up some boundaries, but having that communication, we were able to talk about that. Like, Hey, we feel our relationship with our significant others might be coming, might start to become strained because of our relationship. What can we do to fix that? And so we said, Hey, let's, give our husbands our own individual time without any outside bothers. And that's when we decided to have this boundary. Yeah. Dawn, what is that like for you when, when you hear from Cher, like, okay, I don't want you to come for, you know, two weeks, come for one week instead. Cause you mentioned that. What is that like for you to hear it? Well, of course I, I would want to come for two weeks. What mother wouldn't, <laughs> right? But I, you know, like, it's all about hearing what she wants and make, making sure that she's happy. I mean, with her relationship, I don't want to do anything to hurt the relationship. So if it's important to her, then of course I'm going to step back and then, you know, just come for a week if that's what it is. Yeah. See, I think that that is, is key. As a mom, you, you're able to take in that feedback and not get all angry and bent out of shape around it. 
It's mm-hmm. really important. I can't say it enough to really take that feedback. Listen, listen to what your child really wants. Hear them because it will bring you closer if you do. And if you don't just keep a closed ear and say, well, this is this and this is what I want to do, because that's just going to separate you more. Mm-hmm. You know? you and, and don't- I'm sorry. No, I was going to say, I think being on the show, people might say that our relationship is, you know, is too much or she, my mom's too overbearing. But I think something that everyone who watches the show can agree on is that we do have a very close relationship. Um, and so I do think that is a positive. So we might be not everybody's cup of tea, but I think just we have, we're, we're our own cup of tea. So we're, we are happy with at the least that we do have a close relationship. And as long as, the, you know, we're happy within our relationship, that's what yeah. we And we're like, say to other mothers and daughters, you don't have to have a relationship like us. Create your own, create your own special relationship that makes you two happy. Well, what I, I noticed between the two of you is you're both defining your relationship based on what works for you. So share it's you feel like you can tell your mom, how you feel, and she's going to respect you. Like Mm -hmm. there is a mutuality, a mutual respect there. And it would be very different if you were inserting yourself, Dawn, into Cher's life and and Cher was telling you, please don't, and you aren't respecting that. It just seems like for both of you, you, the lines of communication are very open. Yes. 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 Yeah. So talk about the show. You're having your grand finale this week. Yes. I can't believe that it's already coming to the end. This is season four. um, And now it is the finale. So, um, you know, I'm excited. It's been such a wonderful and fun experience where they get to follow us along, you know, the journey of our past year. And so there's still so much that we have coming up this year, which is really exciting. Um, So, yeah. Yeah, and we're so excited. Not only do we do the chat amount pocket, but we now have a clothing line, like she has said before. And we actually designed all the clothing ourselves. And we went back and forth. You know, I love shopping. I love buying clothes. And I said, oh, my God, let's do this together. And it's just yeah. one more thing that we could check off that we do together. And that's what's fun. Mm-hmm. Well, and I love how you both dress. <laughs> I love how, you know, you have on like your beautiful blue outfit, but it was a little different. Right. So I so have like always off the shoulder. And then see, I think one of you have like a little lace in the blue. And <laughs> yeah, so it, it is. It's always a little different because we want to show our individuality on it. So it, it's never exactly the same. Mm-hmm. And so, yes, our twinning line is called Twinning with Dawn and Cher. And it's all, it's very similar. It's something fun. We enjoy, sometimes we'll enjoy twinning and matching outfits, something we were, I've been doing with my mom since I was a little girl, but we don't want it to be the exact same yeah. to us. That's too, we're not, we're not actually twins or mother and daughter. We yeah. want our own individuality, but similar, but similar. So having our own line, being able to actually draw it together and go back and forth for months and now being able to see the clothes come to life and have a line where moms and daughters can shop together and have a fun, you know, have fun with their relationship because, you know, life's about having fun and creating memories. So we're very excited about it. Um, and it's, launching on our Instagram pages and we're just, we're super excited. It's only a four day launch. So it's like a a super, um, we're putting it out into the world and seeing what comes our way from there. And also what we did is like, you know, I'm older. So for instance, on our gym tops, because we have sportswear coming out, I have a gym top that's loose, but has a bra that's attached to a a loose top because I didn't want my belly showing. But then (laughs) Sierra has one that's a crop top and and her belly is showing. So it's good for all ages, which is, Mm -hmm. you know, great. Yeah, that's great. I know. That's key for me. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) I I don't... (laughs) I love so many shirts now, but they're cropped and I wear it as long as my arms are down, but then I go like this and you know, it's all going up. So yeah, yeah. Don't want that if I'm doing a yoga class, you know? <laughs> so that, so it is for what age girls? 
So it is it start younger and it goes up and uh, so tell what's the age group? Um, I'd say te- um, teens into, you know, and into adulthood. Yes. All okay. ages. Yes. All ages. And it sounds like you have a fun mission behind it. Yeah. Right? Connection. I mean, what I hear is you are, that is why behind everything you're doing, it's to create connection between moms and daughters. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Having fun in the process. Well, this has been so great. Is there Mm -hmm. anything else that you want to, to add? Encouragement for moms? Anything else that you want our listeners to know about? I think if you get anything from this, just pick up the phone, call your mom, or if you're a mom, go sit down today, grab a cup of coffee with your daughter and just talk, really listen and start get that communication really going and just showing that it always comes from a place of love and that you're your child's biggest fan. I think for me, that was just the most rewarding thing is just knowing that my mom's my biggest fan and that she's always there for me. And so I think today, go grab yourself a cup of coffee with your daughter or go grab yourself a piece of cake or ice cream with your daughter and, or son and just start chatting. Love that. I feel the same way. And like, she knows I always have her back and I know she always has my back. And, you know, also I, I say that, you know, as mom, you could also tell your daughter things too. We're not perfect and hear their point of view on something and show them that we're human we make mistakes and we understand your mistakes also. And that's okay. I actually love that point, mom, just because I think for me growing up, knowing that you would come to me and ask me for my advice shows me that like you trust my opinion, my, I feel validated for. And so I, and I feel that you, you respect me as an individual, not just as a child. Even when I was a child, my mom would come to me and ask me, what are your thoughts on this? And ask me even for advice. And I just felt like, wow, my mom respects me that much. I'm just a kid to ask me her opinion. And it made me build this real trust and this friendship with her. Um, So I love that you said that because I think that's just so, so true. Yeah, that she believes in you, that you have yeah. um, and we, and I think that's that part of wanting to give our daughters advice versus, well, what, you know, what do you think about, you want to do about that? Or what yeah. is your opinion with this situation that I'm in? That it's not just us as moms way up here speaking down to our daughters. It's like, we can learn from mm-hmm. our daughters too. Yes. Yeah. Positive words of affirmation, you know, build your child up so they can grow and and have wings and have confidence in themselves. I mean, never enough words of affirmation, I feel. Mm -hmm. It's funny. I started that with my daughter already. She's three. And every night before she goes to bed, we'll say her words of affirmations together um, because I want her to grow up always knowing how, how loved she is, how beautiful, how smart and that she is, and just for her to truly believe in herself. And I think that's something that, you know, I learned from my mom as well. Yeah. You're passing it down through the generations, that positivity and that affirmation and knowing your love. That's yeah. Beautiful thing. And like you said, Dawn, it's never too late. Never Mm -hmm. too late. Never too late. And I know that myself with having two daughters that are out of the house now, it's never too late. So Yeah. Well, tell them one last time where to find you, your website. You have a lot there. (laughs) There. So why don't you? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, Well, you can, if you head over to sharehubshire.net, you could see all of everything that we have. But if you go to a bond that lasts forever.com, or if you check out our book, it's called a bond that lasts forever. And it's how we got so close and how you can too. Um, That is our book. Our podcast is called Chattermouth Podcast. We hope you come over to the podcast and just start chatting with us. And we love to communicate with our listeners. Um, So that's called Chattermouth Podcast. And you can watch it on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. Spotify, um, or wherever you get your podcast. And if you follow us on Instagram, I'm at sharehubshire. My mom is at dawn.hubshire. And on Instagram, we'll be launching our big clothing line, which we're so excited about, twinning with Dawn and Cher. Uh, so definitely check that out. And then our TikToks, I'm at Cher Hubshire. My mom's at Dawn Hubshire. And on TikTok, we have lots of mother-daughter um, content creation. And we have so much fun just 
having fun with our relationship. So we hope that you all join the fun with us. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. <laughs> we'll listen and laugh out loud. I mean, I was <laughs> laughing out loud. <laughs> At the conversation. So you're both so much fun. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, thank you. This was so fun. We love what you're doing and inspiring so many people to have, you know, closer relationship and navigate those hard years. Um, So I love that. So thanks for all that you do as well. Thank you. Well, that's it for today, friend. And thank you so much for joining me. And if you are at your wits end with your tween or teens phone, how many can raise your hands to that, right? (laughs) Who is not just at your wits end with your kid's phone? Well, if you are feeling frustrated and you need help, then you're going to want to come to our upcoming workshop. And it's with Dr. Devorah Heitner. Uh, She is the author of ScreenWise, Helping Kids Thrive and Survive in Their Digital World. And she has an upcoming book on navigating privacy and reputation with our kids and teens, which is coming out in 2023, Growing Up in public. She is just a wealth of wisdom. I enjoy her so much. And she's also a sought after speaker. If I didn't say that she is, she's an amazing speaker. Anyway, she is going to be with me. And if you want to sign up, check it out, sign up. You want to go to momsoftweensandteens.com slash screen wise workshop. That's momsoftweensandteens.com slash screenwise workshop, and you can sign up there. So have a great week, and I look forward to being back here with you next time.